more content. With that being said, let's get back to it. So that leads us to the third thing. And the first thing was to challenge your definition of success. And the second thing was to ask the right questions. And the third thing is to value the right information and metric. We just talked about asking the right questions, but if you value the wrong information, you place the wrong value on the wrong metrics. Valuing the right data is greater than asking the right question. Now, I know we just said your success is determined by asking the right questions, but if we don't know what information is important, we can never achieve the success we deserve because we don't always want to rely on being purely inquisitive. We need to understand what information has value. There's the Greek tale of Sisyphus who constantly had to push a rock up a hill. Success for Sisyphus may have been to get that rock to the top, but it would never get there. Sisyphus could have asked the question, how do I get the rock to stay? But perhaps the more important question should have been, why must I do this? That information is infinitely more valuable than how do we get the rock to stay? Oftentimes what feels like progress looks far more like swimming in circles from a 50,000 foot view of the work that we're doing. Oftentimes, we've trained ourselves to value information that won't solve the bigger problem because it solves the problem of not being uncomfortable. It's easy to take surface level information and make minor important decisions to feel like we're getting a lot of work done. But how many times have you opened up an ad account to turn an ad off or optimize to some KPI only to find yourself solving that problem over and over again? How many times have you asked yourself, why do I have to keep doing this? How many times have you solved the problem just to have to solve it again? This is a great opportunity for us to ask what information is actually valuable because we've been valuing the wrong information and asking the wrong question because our definition of success was solving the problem in front of us. As a result, we're just solving the same problem over and over again, pushing that rock up the hill day after day, swimming in circles and never getting anywhere. If the questions that you ask are giving you enough information to get you back to the beginning of the maze so that you have to solve the problem over and over again, that is a sign that the information that you are valuing doesn't solve the bigger problem. I see so many people lose clients because they've solved the problem of improving ROAS or adding spend to revenue. But we have to remember that so often our definition of success is improving the metrics based on the questions that we asked to begin with. So often the way to provide undeniable value and rise above being the provider of a replaceable undeniable skill is to ask a question based on more information to solve a bigger problem and redefine what success actually looks like. In my years of spending hundreds of millions of dollars on Facebook, the biggest brands that I've grown, the ones that I've taken from eight or 15 million to 50 or 100, our definitions of success evolved as the business changed. The only reason that I've been brought in over and over again as a partner in these brands around the world to help them grow is because I was able to be uncomfortable and value different information as the landscape changed so that we could ask more important questions. The reality is that that none of this is easy. By definition, we are going to be uncomfortable. This is going to be difficult. And to hold the expectation that this is gonna be easy because somebody on Twitter or YouTube said so, without taking into context the years of the repetition of this process that got them to that place is extraordinarily unrealistic. Real masters can make the difficult and complicated look easy. We've all seen true artists in their work in a way that just flows. But all of that takes time and dedication and the obsession of solving bigger problems. The honest truth is that no matter how big the problem is, no matter how daunting the feat may seem to be, history has shown millennium after millennium that as soon as somebody does something, as soon as the impossible becomes possible, the level of dedication and work it takes to accomplish that task becomes less and less. My favorite example of this is a story of a Greek soldier. In 1490 BC, during the first Persian invasion of Greece, the Athenians famously defeated the Persian army while wildly outnumbered. 
and a single soldier ran from the beachfront to Athens to let everyone know the story of King Darius's defeat in his effort to subjugate Greece. And since then, during the Olympics in ancient Greece and even today, people tried to run these great distances faster and faster. And for literally 2,000 years, no one was ever able to run a mile under four minutes. Until 1954, when a nerdy kid named Roger Bannister, who was only 25 years old, in a slight rain with a little bit of wind, who had gone through the process of defining success differently and asking better questions and valuing better data, ultimately figured out how to run a single lap in under a minute. And then he worked out how to do it four times. And that lap was about a quarter mile, it was 400 meters. And since then, 1,500 people have done it. 2,000 years since the Battle of Marathon and the world's greatest athletes could not accomplish this feat. And then one nerdy kid did it in a slight rain with a little bit of wind. And to only further prove this point, the second person did it 41 days later. And his record only stood for three years until somebody did it even faster than that. The point here is that the blueprint for your success and what will define your potential comes down to three simple things. What is your definition of success? What questions are you asking? And what information do you hold is valuable? Now, there's a lot of information out there. And I said today, you know, take a look at courses and take a look to find mentors. And if you value my information and you want to learn more, down below in the description, you'll find a link to join Disruptor School or the Facebook Ads MBA program. Or for free, you can just sign up for the newsletter. And if you want one-on-one -on -one time with me, there's a link for that too. I, I mentioned how I have calls like that every single week and the problems that I work through with people. And I just want to say, I know you could be literally anywhere on the internet right now, but you've chosen to be here. And for that, I want to say thank you. My biggest goal is to pass on what I've learned. I want to give it all away because the more I can give it, the more I will get. And that bounty provides for myself and my family and is one of the reasons that I've probably been able to stay sober over a decade now. With that being said, thank you very much. And YouTube thinks you might like a couple of these videos. Don't forget to smash the button. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet.